College Algebra. We have two more class lessons after today. Next Monday and Wednesday, and then come the final exams. So I hope <clears throat> you're looking at your practice final exam. It will show you ev every problem that is on the real exam. Give you some practice there. That'll help you a lot. OK, we are recording. So let's begin. We're going to be solving exponential equations today. It will help you a lot if you um, uh, keep going over the arithmetic of logarithms, the properties of logarithms that we reviewed on Monday and that we went over in depth the week before Thanksgiving break. Here is an exponential equation. This is an exponential expression. There's an equal sign. And then there's another kind of expression. That's what an equation is. <clears throat> an expression equals an expression. Now, what we have to do is solve this, and this is easier than most Try to get my legs comfortable. Um, this is easier than most exponential equations. Because I can manipulate 16 so that it has the same base as the expression on the left side of the equal sign. Because 16 equals 2 to the fourth power. So I can rewrite this as 2 to the 7x minus 7 power, should really put parentheses around that, equals 2 to the fourth. Now the very fact that 2 is 2 and 2 raised to this power equals 2 raised to this power means that the powers have to be equal. So since the bases are the same, all I have to do is pay attention to the exponents, set them equal, and solve for x. And you notice that I left the answers in here so that you and I can check ourselves. OK, so. I'm going to add in in solving for X, I'm going to add seven. To both sides of our equation. And that will give me seven X equals four plus seven is eleven. Then I'm going to divide by 7 and divide by 7. So the 7s will cancel out here in front of the x. And that will give me x equals 11 over 7. This is a nice trick to use when you can. Most of the time you cannot. Okay. Here we have the same kind of thing, because you know that four is two to the second power. So we're gonna do exactly the same thing again. However, this will get more interesting later. Two to the three X minus five power equals two to the two power. Since the number two is the number two, the base, the exponents have to be equal. So once again, we'll set 
we'll set the exponents equal to each other because they have to be equal to each other. If the bases are the same, it only makes sense. I'll add five to both sides. And what that will give me is since the negative five and five equals zero, I'll have three X equals two plus five is seven. Then to get X by itself, I'll divide by three, I'll divide by three. The threes cancel in front of the X. And so I will have X equals seven thirds. And this answer agrees with my math lab's answer. So sometimes solving exponential equations is so totally easy, you can do it with your eyes shut. Most of the time, it's not that easy. Like this, two to the X equals six. I can't think of two raised to a power that equals six. So we're going to have to use a tool that you'll get very, very used to. This is the perfect, uh, the purpose of inverse functions. They undo each other, for lack of a better term. When you have a problem like this, where there is no particular relationship between the left side and the right side of the equation, but you do have to solve for X, so somehow you have to bring that X down. There's only one tool that will bring an X down so that you can end this with X equals something. And that's a logarithm, the inverse function of exponential functions. So we'll have log of two to the X equals log of six. Now that we're dealing with logs, we can use the power rule that says, okay, bring that exponent in the argument down in front so that I will get X times log two, log of two, equals log six. Now log two is just a number, log six is just a number, so I'm going to divide both sides by log two. The log twos cancel out, leaving me with X equals log six over log two. And so we will find out what that is. Log six, close your parentheses, divided by log Two, close your parentheses. Ah, close your parentheses. Then hit enter. And here's what I get. Okay, I thought I had already written it here, but let me do this. Let me do this. Um, right here. I'm going to do this. Log six divided by log two equals this number.
OK, now I have to put this answer in. But notice that what I have is 2.5849 as my first four decimal place as well as the answer, because this says I need to round to four decimal places. So here are the four decimal places. One, two, three, four. What I do is I go to that end, the last decimal place, and I look one decimal place to the right. Whatever this number is will determine what that last digit is. That six will cause the nine to go up to a five. Uh, cause the nine to go up to a ten. So what we'll have is this situation, 2.58549, but the nine goes up to a 10. So what I do is I write down the zero and I carry the one. One plus four is five. Bring down the eight, bring down the five, bring down the decimal point, bring down the two. So my answer is 2.5850. And that agrees with the my math lab answer. Sometimes my math lab gets it wrong. Sometimes I get it wrong. Um, I think the odds are in our favor when we agree. So let's see what we did. I took the log of both sides. Why log, which is log base 10? Well, it's very convenient. It's right there on your calculator, so you can easily get, a dis um, easily get an answer. I could have taken the LN for both sides, but what I do is I reserve that for when I've got an E in my equation. You'll see this later. So I stick with log if there is no E. Now here we have the same exact kind of problem. Let's do the same exact thing again. We have two to the X equals three. Take the log of both sides. That permits me to bring my X down in front so that it multiplies log two. Log two is just a number. So we divide both sides by log two. The log twos cancel over on the left side, leaving me with X equals log three divided by log two. And now we have to get a decimal answer that rounds to four decimal places and looks amazingly like this answer, except up above is 2.5850 and this answer is 1.5850. But let's Let's do it again. This time. Well, why don't I leave that up there? I've got log three over log two. So log three divided by log two. Again, we're going to have that same situation. Let me copy it and bring it over because it will be good for you and for anyone else reading these notes after the video to help them figure out what's going on. 
Woo, gigantic. Here we go. Here, I can put it up here. All right, again, this says round to four decimal places. Most, but not all of these homework problems say round to four decimal places. Okay, so if I'm rounding to four decimal places, I count out four decimal places, one, two, three, four, and I draw a little, whoops, there now. I make a little dashed line here after the fourth digit, then I look immediately to the right at the six. The six will cause the nine to go up to a 10. We go through this whole process again. Nine goes up to a 10, carry the one because 10 is one zero. One plus four is five. Bring down the eight, bring down the five, bring down the decimal point, bring down the one. And here is your answer. That's the approximate answer. This is actually the exact answer, but there's not a whole lot you can do with it in real life. Now you can see we're getting a little more complicated here. We've got 15 to the X equals five to the X plus two. Okay, well, I am going to take the log of both sides. Log of 15 X, 15 to the X. equals log of five to the X plus two power. Now watch what happens. We bring the exponents down in front, but X plus two is the exponent, so it is coming down in front of this log. So what I'll have is X times the log of 15 equals X plus two times the log of five. All right, see, I took the log of 15 to the X, I took the log of five to the X plus two, and then I brought the logs down in front. Now, this happens a lot. What we're going to do, log five is just a number, I'm going to distribute that number to X and to two because there are two terms in here. So I'll have X times the log of 15 equals X times the log of five plus two times the log of five. Well, we're not done, but let us appreciate the artwork. Oh, 
okay, now I'm going to write this up here and now we'll be able to go directly down. I have X times the log of 15 equals X times the log of 5 plus 2 times the log of 5. I need to get my X terms together, just like with any equation. They need to be together on the same side of the equal sign. That's true all the time. What if you had a normal kind of equation, like 3X equals 2X plus 5? Well, you would subtract the 2X from both sides in order to get the X terms together on one side. 3X minus 2X is 1X, so X equals 5. That, of course, has nothing whatsoever to do with this, but it's the method for solving equations. I'm just going to do the same thing. This is a number times X equals a number times X. I have to get my X terms together. So let me erase this before somebody thinks they're related. This was just an example. Okay, I'm going to subtract X times the log of five from both sides of the equation. In fact, I want to do this differently. One thing I was taught over and over again when I was young, and that is always try to keep your equal signs in a straight vertical line. You're less likely to make mistakes if you do that. Okay, over here on the left, we're going to have X times the log of 15, and I'm not gonna be able to keep them in the equal signs in a, in a straight line, at least not for the moment. Minus X times the log of five, equals, because this line is just too long. We'll correct that in just a minute. Um, X over on the right side, X times the log of five minus X times the log of five is zero. So we're left with two times the log of five. Cool beans. X is in both of these terms. I can factor it to the front because it's a greatest common factor. X times log 15 minus log 5. equals to log five. Now, you're going to be putting this answer in your calculator as is shown by that answer right there. And if I divide both sides of the equation by log 15 minus log 5. 
it's going to be really difficult for me to put that in the calculator in just the right way for the calculator to know what I really mean and so give me the answer that I need. We have to make it easy for the calculator, so I'm going to use the arithmetic of logarithms, the property of logarithms, to make this problem as easy as possible for me to put it in the calculator in the correct way. Here we go. I'm going to use the quotient rule for logarithms. I'm going to erase this first, because I'm not going to be dividing yet. I'm going to use the quotient rule here. I'm even going to write a note underneath. Quotient rule. And while we're at it, I'm going to use the power rule here. And here's how. Log, this is log base 10. The log of, I mean, I just wanted you to remember that. The log of 15 minus the log of 5 is the log of 15 divided by 5. Let's do it again. The log of 15 over 5. That's the quotient rule of logarithms. Equals the power rule of logarithms says that this number can come up and become an exponent. So this is going to be log 5 to the second power. Well, 5 goes into 15, and I know what 5 squared is. This is going to be x times the log of 3 equals the log of 25. Now it's going to be totally easy for me to put this in the calculator. I divide both sides by log 3. Cancel out the log 3s on the left so that I have x <clears throat> equals log 25 over log 3. And I'm going to put that in the calculator and get the right answer. Log. 25, close parentheses, divided by log 3, close parentheses, equals, there you go. Let's take this over. <clears throat> to the homework page and put it somewhere on this page. I have this awful feeling I did it twice. Maybe not. Okay. Now notice that we again are going to be rounding to four decimal places. 
You do have to read it though, because it's not always going to be for decimal places. I said that before, just getting you ready. Okay, here is decimal place one, two, three, four. This four is not big enough to make the nine go up to a 10. So we're not gonna have to play that game again. Instead, our answer that we're, it, that we're gonna go with is 2.9299. Now let's see, I think that's their answer. Yes, it is. Okay, now look what we had to do here. We had two exponential uh, expressions linked with an equal sign. We took the log of both sides, which enabled us to bring the exponents down in front. Then, because this exponent had two terms in it, I had to distribute log five to both the x and to the two. Then I had to subtract this X term from both sides in order to get my X terms together on the left side of the equation. Then I use the quotient rule to turn this into the log of 15 over five, which simplified into log three. And over here, I use the power rule to take the number multiplying log five and turn it into an exponent, which gave me log 25, so that this horribly ugly conglomeration of words and terms and, and numbers, words and, and, and numbers, was simplified into this very, 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 very easy statement that I can put into the calculator and get an answer. So the rules of arithmetic, the, the arithmetic of logarithms are very valuable to you if you want to get the right answer. Here we have another problem just like that. And it can't hurt for you to see me do it again. So let's see. We're gonna take the log of both sides. just about, two, the log of two to the x plus one power. The whole purpose of doing that is so I can bring the x's down, or bring the exponents down, and the exponents contain x's, the variable, that I need to solve for. It's the only way. So that will give me x times the log of six equals x plus one times the log of two. And then I take the log of two, and I don't know, let's put brackets around it. I'm going to distribute it to the x and to the one. So what I will 
have is um yeah this is what i'll have x times log six equals x is this all the way over yes it is okay i need to write smaller x log 6 equals x log 2 plus 1 times log 2, which of course is just log 2. And then I like to put parentheses around my arguments because after all your calculator puts parentheses around the arguments we should do the same thing. That and when I took college algebra as a student, I had the meanest college algebra teacher in the world. If we didn't, if we students did not put parentheses around the arguments of the logarithm function, boom, he took off credit. So, I do it. Now, I need to get my X terms together. So I'm going to subtract X times the log of two from both sides of this equation. And that will give me X times the log of six minus x times the log of 2 equals the log of 2. Notice that this time, the number in front of log 2, the number multiplying log 2, is 1. 1 times log 2 is log 2. All right, now since x on the left occurs uh, in both terms, it's a, a GCF, a greatest common factor. So X times quantity log six minus log two equals log two. So X we're going to use the, um, the arithmetic of logarithms now, also called the properties of logarithms. Your book actually calls it the properties of logarithms, but I prefer the arithmetic of logarithms because it is like an arithmetic. Okay, using the quotient rule, this will give us log six over two. equals log two. So we'll have x, e, x times log three, because six divided by two is three, equals log two. Oop. Now I'll divide both sides by log three because log three is just a number. And we will have x equals log 2 divided by log 3. And that will be. Hello. Yeah. Took a minute. Log two. 
divided by log 3. Is that? four decimal places. I do have to turn my stylus the right way. Um, one, two, three, four. Okay, 0 0.6309 should be their answer, is my answer, yes! Okay. Um, I'm gonna move that. So 0 0.60, 0 0.630. Zero. Nine. Just makes it more clear, but 0 0.6309 is just as accurate. So that's how you do that kind of problem. That's how you solve that kind of equation. Now, I'm going to insert a page for these. Now I gave you some extra credit exponential equation problems that were this kind of problem. Um, and I'm going to do this for you. Although it is part of your homework. But I need to insert a page. Okay, so let's do this. Notice the second one's just like the first one. So you're going to use exactly the same steps. All right, let's go to it. Ah. This is nowhere near as hard as it seems to be, but in the beginning, this is so scary that it could just paralyze you. But I promise you, it's gonna be okay. First, let's, um, I'm going to put some notes in here while I do this. E, e is just a number, right? So first, how about that for the first note? The first note, E is a number that's about 2.7. Okay. And that number to a negative exponent is one over that number to a positive exponent. 
That's the definition of a negative exponent. It changes the location of the base. So we come over here. Um, I need to move that a little. I can't move it a little. Okay, fine. This will give me e to the x plus 1 over e to the x equals 3. Now we have a rational equation. The way we always handle rational equations is we multiply all the terms in the equation by the lowest common denominator. And since we've only got one denominator, that's automatically the lowest common denominator. So I'll multiply the left side by e to the x, and I'll multiply the right side by e to the x. Now I'm going to distribute over on the left side. I'll take e to the x and multiply it by e to the x, and multiply it by 1 over e to the x. So here's what I've got now. e to the x times e to the x, plus e to the x times 1 over e to the x equals 3 times e to the x. Okay. Starting back at the left here. e to the x times e to the x, I'm multiplying like bases so I'll add the exponents. Those are the rules of exponents. X plus X. That's E to the X plus X plus, now I'm going to write E to the X as E to the X over one. Same thing. All right, e to the x plus x is e to the 2x plus. All right, when you multiply fractions, you multiply the numerators together and the denominators together. You get e to the x over e to the x. equals 3 e to the x. Now, in all truth, I could have cross-canceled and just canceled out the e to the x's, would have gotten the same answer, e to the 2x plus 1. Anytime the numerator and the denominator of a fraction are identical, they cancel out and give you a 1. That equals 1. Okay, now I'm going to subtract this e th bah. <laughs> Well, maybe I can talk and maybe I can't. I'm going to subtract three times e to the x from both sides of the equation. so that I can set it equal to zero. I can set the equation equal to zero. And so over here, I will have e to the 2x minus three e to the x plus one. So e to the 2x minus three e to the x plus one equals zero. Now, I notice 
that two times X is two times X. Whenever you have the situation such that the leading exponent is two times the middle exponent, and you've got three terms, you can use U substitution. Yeah, so U is going to equal E to the X, and U squared is going to equal E to the X squared. When you have a base raised to a power and raised to a power again, you multiply the powers. So this is E to the two X. So what I know is that E to the two X is U squared. E to the X is U. And now I have a pretty normal looking quadratic equation. E squared minus 3u plus 1. And since 1 will not factor into two factors that add up to negative 3, I'm going to have to use the quadratic formula. Okay. So u, we're not using x, we're using u. U equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. Well, let's see. There's a 1 in front of the U squared. So A is 1. B is negative 3. And C is positive 1. So U equals negative, negative 3, plus or minus the square root of parentheses negative 3 squared minus 4 times 1 times 1 all over 2 times 1 and this will equal positive 3 plus or minus the square root of 9 minus 4 over 2, which is 3 plus or minus the square root of 5 over 2. And what that means is that u equals 3 minus the square root of 5 over 2 and u equals 3 plus the square root of 5 over 2. But u equals e to the x. So this is going to give us e to the x equals 3 minus the square root of 5 over 2 and e to the x equals 3 plus the square root of 5 over 2. Isn't that pretty? Excuse me. Well, I've got to bring that X down. I need a logarithm. 
And when I've got an E in the equation, I need that special logarithm, the natural logarithm, ln. I'm going to take the ln of both sides of the equation. ln of e to the x equals the ln of 3 minus the square root of 5 over 2. And then over here, we'll do the same thing. The ln of e to the x equals the ln of 3 plus the square root of 5 over 2. Piece of cake, right? Well, bring the x down in front. We'll have x times the ln of e. equals the ln of 3 minus the square root of 5 minus the ln using the arithmetic of logarithms 2 and the reason I'm doing it that way is that um, depending on your model of the TI calculator or your operating system, um, it could be complicated and error provoking to put that in your calculator. So I'm trying to simplify this for everybody. Over here, I do the same thing. X times the ln of E equals the ln of 3 plus the square root of 5 minus the ln of 2. And since the ln of E equals 1, this is x times 1, which is x. So x equals the ln of 3 minus the square root of 5 minus the ln of 2, and same thing over here, x equals the ln of 3 plus the square root of 5 minus the ln of 2. Now, before I go on, I'm going to save. And I'm going back up here to see what kind of answer is to this one. OK, they want decimals. So you see, we've got to put this in the calculator. It's much easier to do it this way. So here we go. There, I'll make this larger again in just a minute. I just have to see all my keys. LN three minus the square root of five. Now, for people with this operating system, um, hit the right arrow key before you close your parentheses. There. Minus the ln of two. And while we're at it, See, this is just so easy to do it this way. Second enter will give you a repeat of your initial line, and then you can just go make whatever corrections you need to make. There, the ln of three plus the square root of five minus the ln of two, enter. And let me enlarge this for you right there. So. Going to copy both of these.
and moves them over here. We're at um, a little over double zoom. So when this goes back to its right size and you look at it, um, this will look a lot better. If we go down to 100%, that's what it looks like. So it actually should be a little bigger. There. All right, now back up. Okay, I'm going to flatten that. And then I'm going to read the instructions. What a concept. And we are rounding to the nearest hundredth. See? Oh, oh, wrong problem. But we're still rounding to the nearest hundredth. That means two decimal places. Okay, two decimal places. This two will not cause the six to go up to a seven, and down here that two will not cause the six to go up to a seven. So our answers are X equals negative 0.96, and positive 0.96. Now you study these steps when you do the second problem. I think that my way of doing it is much more understandable than um, my math lab's question helps. I mean, they take some shortcuts that I don't take. I put in every little step. which can be a real pain to some people, I know that. All right, one more problem. We're going to solve this. And we're going to do it by taking the logarithm, the natural logarithm of both sides of the equation. The ln of E to the negative 0 0.14 of 41t equals the ln of 0 0.87. Yeah, I should rewrite that, shouldn't I? 41. All right. Now, why do this? Because it lets me bring the exponent down. And the variable is in the exponent. So we are going to have negative 0.41t times the ln of e, which is 1, equals the ln of 0 0.87. So that what we have here now is negative 0 0.41 t equals the ln of 0 0.87. I divide both sides by negative 0 0.41. And now all we have to do is put that 
in the calculator and hopefully come out with this answer, which is rounded to four decimal places. Type an integer or a decimal. Do not round until the final answer, then round to four decimal places. OK. So trusty calculator coming out. The LN of 0.87 divided by negative 0.41. And there you go. All right, where, wait, let me copy this. Okay, here are our four decimal places. But this six is big enough to make the six go up to a seven. So our answer will be 0.3397. Or if you like, 0 0.3397. Just continuing that on down. Okay, notice how easy this was. Pretty cool. Okay. We are done going over your exponential functions homework. Um, let me save and then you tell me, do you have any questions? I'm sure you do. So you want to maybe, if you can, print these steps out, print this, ugh, that is large. Oh dear. Hmm, well ignore this. just sort of stuck there. I knew, I knew that I had clicked twice and made a copy appear twice, but I couldn't find it, so I hoped that I had not really done it. So uh, just ignore that. Where does this go? Ah, it goes to this one down here. And there's the well-behaved one right there. Oh well, these things happen. Questions, discussion. I'm sure you have a lot of questions and discussion. Ah, well, luckily this answer is up there. So all is well with the world. I'm sure you can do your homework now. It's strange, but you can get used to it. On Monday, we solve logarithmic equations. Then on Wednesday, we solve the um, exponential growth and decay problems. So, no questions? Questions are great. But if you don't have any, um, I will see you on Monday. Have fun studying. You need to be studying a lot. Today is done. We have two more class periods, Monday and Wednesday, and then final exams start. So just remember that. Uh, I will talk to you on Monday, if not before. 
Remember my office hours from three to six tonight, or email me if you want to meet with me at another time. I am available. Bye-bye.